Why is it not going live? I just got a notification that says you're alive. Yep. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Zeke webinar. Today, we have Dr. Keith Jones with Corelight Labs, who will be presenting on detecting the FaceFish Linux rootkit with Zeke. Keith has presented before because uh, I think Spicy is near and dear to his heart. And today, uh, he's going to be expounding on his recent blog post of the same name. Uh, if you'd like to ask questions, please post them in the chat. And the slides will be available uh, when we post this publicly uh, on YouTube and share it. And with that, Keith, the floor is yours. Thank you much. And the important thing is um, when Amber said that the slides will be available, it's some, you're going to see some of the links in here clickable and so forth. So um, when you get into the slides, I did that on purpose so you can easily get to all these different parts that I'm talking about. And also, um, you're going to see some screen captures uh, from the blog and I have the blog linked in here. So any of the images or anything that might not come through um, through the way I'm showing it to you right now, if you were to go to the slide or the blog, you can actually pull up bigger images and zoom in and stuff like that and make it easier to see. So <clears throat> we tried to do our best there. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about um, FaceFish Linux rootkit and it was, um, gosh, uh, it was a few weeks back. I saw it a couple times on some open source threat intel. And like anything else, I kind of said, oh, that's kind of neat. But I saw it one time, and then I saw it two times, and then I saw it three times. And I said, well, this might be something worth writing a detector for. And so then I started mulling around, well, how are we going to write a detector for it? And if you've seen my um, previous webinars, um, I believe I've talked about the bin pack version, which is a lot more complicated. Um, to develop these things versus uh, spicy. So I'm going to show you um, just kind of how I went down the path of, you know, uh, digging out the C2 uh, communication structures and um, easily putting it into uh, spicy grammar, which um, is almost looks the same in some spots. And then um, I will show you some uh, some how to generate some test data if you don't have real data, like I did at the beginning. And then I'm going to show you an example at the end where we actually run it on a uh, PCAP that I found out in the wild. All right. And with that, let's talk about the rootkit itself for a second because we got to understand the C2 mechanisms in order to uh, parse it up and detect it with Zeek. So like I promised, here's a bunch of uh, links for you. The uh, original work, if you'd like the longer version, is in the um, blog up here. And I think you guys can see my mouse here. So the first bullet up here, that's the blog. So everything I'm talking about, um, you can also find a written format. And that's where all the images are. So the first place I started was the second bullet down. And that was um, the NetLab 360 report on the FaceFish rootkit. And they also referenced the original work, which is the third bullet down here, uh, by Juniper Network. So Juniper um, originally published an article, and it had some information in it. And I think at the beginning of the 360 article, they said, you know, we wish there was more information in there, so that's why we're publishing this. And, and they also, I believe, uh, the 360 article also named it Face Fish. Now, if you were to uh, comb through all those articles, you will come to a spot that kind of looks like this structure here. If you're familiar with like the C, C++ type structures. Um, it's not exactly because I kind of cleaned it up and simplified it a little bit, but this is what the structure looks like that goes across the wire. You have a word up front that's payload length. You have a word. The next one is a word that's a command. And I highlighted that one because that's what we're going to be using uh, to parse. Then you have a CRC and then you have the payload itself. And I made a note for you at the bottom that this default port, uh, as a, as um, uh, reported by um, the articles I just showed you in the last slide, was port 443. But it's important to note it's not SSL. Like what I'm showing you here, this structure, this is FaceFish C2 protocol structure. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with SSL, even though it's on the same port. All right, so that command, what that is, is it's, it's a numerical number, and it 
basically says what's happening with this message that's coming across the, the wire. So the first time Facefish starts talking uh, to its uh, C2 server, it does a key exchange. So it's the first three commands up front. And what I, what you will see at, by the end of this uh, slide I'll, in the actual examples is you're going to see it actually happens in that order. Key exchange number one happens from one, you know, from one uh, host to the other, and then key exchange two happens going back the other way, and then key exchange three goes the original direction again, and then basically there's a registration after that, and then they start sending data. And <clears throat> so after those um, first three bullets with the key exchange, the other commands that can happen in these packets are, you know, report stolen information or maybe tell it to collect information. Uh, you can actually uh, fire off a reverse shell. You can um, uh, send the registration information. Uh, from what I understand, you can actually execute uh, individual commands itself, and that's these commands, these, um, I'm using the word commands twice. Uh, you can actually uh, execute command lines, like bash execution through using these commands, the 311, um, the number 311 down here at the bottom where I'm hovering my mouse. And then uh, number 312 will basically um, kind of re-automate collecting the information or sending it. All right, so when it goes across the wire, it's just bits and bytes. So what it looks like is this slide. And <clears throat> even if you're not going to read the words in there, just know that this is little Indian, so it matters um, the byte order matters. The command, remember I uh, told you there's a payload length up front, and then there's a command, and then there's a CRC, and then there's a payload. So in the very first uh, packet that goes across uh, for the C2 protocol, it has a zero payload length, and there is no payload. I just signify that by saying no payload over here. And then we have our command, which is going to be 200, but in Little Endian, it's actually uh, flipped. The byte order is flipped, so it's going to look like just two coming across the wire. And then the CRC is going to be zero, and then there's going to be no payload. So once we know this, we can, uh, this plus you know all the commands and things I've been told uh, I told you about in the previous slides, we can start to write a protocol analyzer in Spicy that will represent these um, aspects of, of the Facefish uh, C2 protocol. So before we start writing the, um, sorry, I got a tab open here that's making too many noises. I'm gonna close that. There we go. All right, so before I start writing any spicy code, I want something to test it on. And at the beginning, um, it was a lot of talk about, okay, well, it's gonna do this C2 and it's gonna do that C2, but there weren't any PCAPs that I could just you know, grab from somewhere and then just start coding with that. So the easiest way to do to, to get starting with your coding when you're in this position is just create yourself a PCAP. So I, I told you some um, important clues that we can um, use with some very standard tools in order to create a PCAP. What I did is I opened three different terminals in uh, Linux. And in terminal one, I just opened a netcat listener on port 99999. <clears throat> on, um, Terminal two, then I open up a TCP dump that just does the automate. It does the, the collection of the PCAP, and I only grab the stuff from port 9999. That's why I, I try to put it on a unique port. Then terminal three, this is where the magic's going to happen. We're just going to echo out binary 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, which matches this byte string that I was just describing to you earlier. And it's going to pipe that out to Netcat, and it's going to connect to our other listener. And Terminal 2 is going to see this data go across our, our um, uh, loopback, and it's going to store it in a PCAP for us. Actually, I, I put EN0. This should be, uh, should be oops, sorry, I clicked it. The interface there says EN0, it should be a loopback, but I did a, a loopback for my example. And if you don't want to type all these commands and you just want the PCAP, I actually put the PCAP as a, t a test in the uh, repo as well. 
All right, so the rest of this, I'm just going to talk about the spicy source code. Um, there's the, uh, I have the hash. The reason why I put that link in there is if we improve the spicy source code over time, you can always go back and it'll match this slide. So <laughs> the improvements will um, change the fact that you can actually match the code to the slide if you keep this hash in there. So that's, that's why it looks so long, the URL. All right, so. If you remember earlier, I talked about that string that would go across on one of the first packets for the C2 protocol. And it was basically all zeros except for a two in the, um, in the fourth spot. Well, in signature land, we can easily write this up. We just write signature. We say we want this uh, protocol TCP. And the payload is what I've been showing you, all the zeros except for the two. And when this happens, when we find this at the beginning of a TCP connection, we're enabling the spicy face fish rootkit protocol analyzer. Now you notice in here, I don't have any um, ports or anything, or actually, let me save that. So, all right, I'm gonna finish off here. So this is our signature. And when this signature fires, it's gonna fire off our protocol analyzer. So the next file we want to look at is facefish underscore rootkit.ebt. And this sort of instantiates our protocol analyzer for us. So rows uh, three and four here. This says um, our new protocol analyzer, spicy facefish rootkit, is going to happen over TCP and parse with the facefish rootkit facefish records. And I'll show you what that is in a second. And to go back to a, something I was going to tell you about in a second, ago, which is you don't see any ports in here. You just see, it just says over TCP. And that's because I put the signature in there and we're actually not, we don't care about the port, right? Because we could lock this and say, we want to only be port 443, but it's a pretty um, unique signature up front with the zeros and the two. And I've done a lot of testing on um, a lot of real networks, like seven very large ones. And it just doesn't really false positive all that much. Um, I, every once in a while we'll get a false positive, but it's, I notice it, it tends to be on connections that have missing bytes in the middle. So I haven't seen, I haven't seen a false positive yet on a full connection, full real connection. <clears throat> so, uh, just know that going in that, you know, if the attacker were to take this face fish rootkit and say, ha ha, I'm going to get around them. I'm going to put on port 8080. Well, with this logic, we should be, able to, we will detect it. Uh, lines six and seven, just import other portions of our spicy analyzer. And then line nine is um, a very important line because what it says is when we parse a record there on the left, the face fish record, we want to fire this new event called face fish rootkit message. And then basically I have all the components to um, the information that we parsed up being fed into that um, event there. Okay, so to go to the next um, file in the protocol analyzer is our basefish rootkit.spicy. And this tells us what the structure of the C2 packets will look like. And um, some of this is just kind of boilerplate up front of doing some um, naming of our module and importing it spicy. But line seven is where we switch from big endian or uh, network byte order over to little endian, which is where we had to do the byte flipping earlier. And you can see here, I say a the type of face fish records, plural, is just an array of face fish record singular. And the face fish record singular is a pretty simple uh, structure as far as um, some of the spicy analyzers. Some of them get a lot more complicated than uh, four lines like this. So um, <clears throat> enjoy it when you see it. That you can, you can pretty much go through this uh, pretty quickly where you have the payload length. That's going to be um, 16 bits here. You have the command. It's going to be 16 bits here. And you see here with spicy, the nice thing I can say is, all right, I don't want to just take anything. I want to take it, things that could be a command. And now since I didn't personally do uh, the binary analysis on the face fish rootkit and I relied on other people's reports, I'm not 100% sure if all those commands that they listed are actually all the commands that could be out there. So what I did is I took uh, a numerical range around the commands that they reported 
to sort of give a, a, a fudge factor just in case not everything was reported. So that way um, we're, we're able to um, filter out things that we're pretty sure aren't face fish. But if someone were to change face fish just a little bit, we're still able to grab it with this logic. The next one is the CRC payload. And that's just 32 bits. And then the rest of it is just going to be the payload itself. And we drive that size off of the payload length up here on row uh, 14. Okay, so the next file is going to be our face fish rootkit zeke.spicy. And this is, um, you kind of think of this as uh, glue between zeke and spicy itself. That's sort of how I think about it in my mind. You can see the uh, module up here and some imports, just sort of boilerplate like our other um, files. But here, this is lines 8 through 10. This is when it says, when we actually see a face fish record and we finish parsing it, we then tell Zeke, okay, we, we're confirming this. This is going to be a face fish rootkit uh, protocol. Or we're, we're saying this, this protocol is what we're saying it is, which is face fish. Now, on the other hand, if Spicy were to have an error, let's say, um, if you remember the requires here, let's say the requires was in that range that I talked about earlier. It would then say, oh, well, it aired out between uh, lines 12 and 14. It aired out. And when that happens, it says, all right, reject it. Don't, don't let Zeke think that this is face fish. And then it just gives a nice little message that says, all right, when I was parsing this, I had an error. Line 16 through 28 is a little bit of magic of taking the information from Spicy that we parsed, all the fields, and then making it into a tuple that Zeke will understand as a record. And I'll, I'll you'll see a little more about that function uh, in a slide or two. Now, if we go to Zeke scripting land, which when I was first starting to use Spicy, it felt so good to get back to Zeke. We can uh, quickly go through this. It's just all this is is a table, and what it does is it takes a command and it makes a nice human string out of what that command is, and that's what I use to populate the log, so you don't have to go back and look up what all these numbers are and what they uh, what they mean. So if you remember from I think it was like slide three or four, when I walked you through all those commands, this is basically what I built these strings off of. And then I get to main.zeek, and if I look in the exports section of that file, because the file's a little too big for the slide here, um, up front, I just um, main my new log. I've got a facefish log. I have a new notice type called facefish rootkit c2. My output's um, going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be the payload length. Uh, I'm sorry, the facefish face fish message that would be passing into the events is going to be pretty simple because there aren't a lot of fields that we parse up in the FaceFish C2 packet. It's just these four, the payload length, the command, CRC, and the actual payload. And you're going to see I'm going to use that for our events later on down this file. The output is going to be the info record, and it's it also is uh, pretty simple. We got our time, uh, the usual suspects of the UID, and the ID for the connection is a ridge for the connection. And then down here, we just have the payload length, the command, and the CRC. Um, just because there's it, the, the key change happens and there's encryption, I just didn't output the payload because it would just blow up your logs and it's encrypted. So I try to give you everything except that one field. Now, if we move a little farther down the main.zeek file, I call it the exports. Oh, we're still in the exports. <clears throat> On lines 40 and 44, I have two new, um, or, I, or I declare the two new uh, events. The first one is the rootkit message, the face fist rootkit message that I talked about earlier. And this just makes it, so you can see it in Zeke land, you got the connection here, is a ridge, and then you have that face fish message structure that I just talked about in the previous slide here. And that's going to hold those four different fields that we talked about earlier with the payload length and so forth. And down here, um, this is a neat trick I, I learned from studying the other spicy analyzers. You can actually make an event be attached to logging. So 
anytime there's an actual log being sent, you can have the record being sent to the log sent to another event called log, and I, I just happen to name it, log face fish rootkit. And that's kind of cool because if I didn't want to get in the innards of understanding anything about face fish, but I wanted to somehow hook the information that's going to the log that's already been parsed and uh, pretty, you know, prettied up and so forth, I can then just handle this event and do what I want with this record and you know, there you go. So I just put that in there too, uh, like the other specialty analyzers, to try to make it easy on users. All right, and our events um, here, we just in our Zeek init, we create our new log, basefish log, and all these usual suspects here with the info. Uh, that's the event that we attach to it, log basefish rootkit. That's what I just talked about. And then the path itself is going to be called basefish underscore rootkit. Now, um, so the guts of everything is basically this. Of everything I've talked about is to get up to this point. And that's to handle this event of when we see a base fish rootkit message go by and uh, on our network, what we do is we build an output uh, record. And then we write it. And then I fire off a notice. And then for this one, considering it's a rootkit, um, I made it 60 seconds. But that's something you can could obviously make bigger or smaller, depending on your taste. Um, all right, so let's hit the examples real quick. So I took that test PCAP, remember at the beginning, and I ran it through all that logic. And if you don't want to read what all this is, it's just standard old connection log, and I highlighted the services field for you, and you can see it actually didn't detect spicy face fish or kit. Uh, let's see, let's go to the next log which is the face fish rootkit log. And it had just one line in it. And it says, remember the human readable string I gave you, which is just the key exchange number one, which is exactly what we expected. We expected it just to go from one host to the other with that all zeros except the two. And the notice log here, um, try to print out a nice human readable string for someone that might not be t um, in the weeds with looking at the source code and gave the, uh, the website to the blog information. All right, so the real world PCAP, again, clickable when you get into the slides, you can download it there free. Um, run it through like this, looked at my connection log, tried to save you a bunch of looking around and pull out just the one line we needed to prove to you. Yes, it does pop out as a uh, spicy face fish root kit. And what I did next was look at the face fish rootkit log. And you can see on this real example, this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the presentation, where the key exchange number one happens, and this is the orig. You can see orig to response, key exchange one. This is false, which means it's response to orig, key exchange two. And then this is true, which means key exchange three happened from orig to response again. And then the fourth one is registration. So. In those false positives I talked about earlier that happen every once in a while, I'm on a net, I'm on a couple networks where I'm not seeing all of the data for all connections. So I will see when a false positive will happen, I will see this key X one happen and nothing else. And then what I do is I go look at the connection and then the missed bytes will be, you know, if for instance the connection was you know, 8K, the missed bytes will be like 8K minus eight bytes. It'll be almost all of it. So <clears throat> if you just see this key X1 on there, take that with a grain of salt. But if you see all four of these, that means that, from my understanding of studying this malware, that means it's connected to a C2 server and it's go time. Go time as a defender anyways. All right, this is the notices log. It looks the same as the other. It just says, all right, it hit between these uh, different servers. And that's all I got. I told Amber I'd be about 25 minutes and I'm almost there. So. I have questions. I don't see a chat handy, so I don't know if you have to unmute or type it or what. If you want to take it from here to take questions. Thanks, Keith. Um, if anyone has any questions, if you could please uh, type that in the chat box uh, in your window. We'll give it a few minutes. You do have a thank you, Keith. Got it. From Todd. It. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Very much. Thanks. Hi, you're welcome. 
give it about another 30 seconds if if no one has any questions. Sure, no problem. And while that's going on, um, I did put a couple places where you can contact me down here. Uh, Twitter, usually when I make these things, you'll see like a tweet where I go, hey, I think at this particular one, I was like, hey, I'm looking for a PCAP for face fish. And I was like, I think I can detect it, but I still don't have a PCAP. And then I'll show an example, and you kind of see the work come along. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, just go ahead and follow the Twitter there. And if you just want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, like you know, a spicy question or something like that, um, I try to uh, keep an eye on Zeke Slack at least um, day by day, if not just at me, and I'll, I'll jump in the spicy channel. There's an actual spicy, if you haven't been there before, there's an actual spicy channel uh, devoted to spicy where you can ask um, in-depth um, spicy questions. Keith, you're very responsive on, on the uh, in our Slack channels, and we really appreciate that. And you're very active on your Twitter. So for those who uh, don't follow Keith, please take a moment to follow him on, uh, on Twitter because you'll find out lots of interesting information about the stuff that he's working on before we put out a blog post. Um, so the questions that he asks on Twitter kind of give you a hint to what he's working on next. Yeah, and a lot of times I get an idea of what you know people want to see in logs and stuff because – you know, you code these things up, and if you're not if you're not using these, you know, this is rootkit, and everybody understands it. But the other types of protocols that I code up, you know, if you're not using it every day, you don't really know what people want to see in the logs, and hearing about it um, definitely helps. <laughs> 